It's a, you know, it's the sort of thing that uh, a lot of these state ballot initiatives in, in the U.S. and here in Canada, that the, the laws have actually created this funny situation that the politicians claim that they want to avoid, where they're in some sense uh, uh, giving person a, a person first uh, authorization to possess and use it because they have valid medical purposes, um, and then. You know, because they're unable and unwilling to supply them with good medicine or to regulate clubs like ours, um, they just you know put it to them that they'll grow their own or find someone who will conveniently and inexpensively grow it for them. And people that get these licenses and in, in, in the United States, like in some cases, it's like they, they open up with the initiative, the entire uh, state and you know qualifies it at once, and um, it, it's almost impossible for poor sick people to not exercise the right to grow or give that right to grow to someone else. And so um, that's something that uh, um, it's just ironic, and again I'll get to this next week a bit too, how the medical marijuana issue has really uh, opened the door up farther than even the advocates have tried to at the time. In California, for example, the people behind Proposition 215 never imagined it would be used so broadly as it is now. And for those advocates that argue that all use is medical and that we all have different reasons <coughs> to, to use it, um, you know, it's something that uh, seems to work very much according to how the United States works uh, in, in law and, and in practice where people have the right to protect their privacy in some sense more than, than here. Um, and so they don't have to disclose their medical information as much and just pay the doctor to sign the forms. Um, you had a question? Uh, yeah, um, kind of about the bill initiatives. It seems that in the United States, all states have ballot initiatives. If you get enough votes on any certain issue, you can put it to a statewide vote. We don't have a system like that here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Is there any way for us to speed up the pressing the issue on a, a provincial or federal level? Well, I should just switch to Canada here um, because uh, we have uh, um, the possibility to present ballots to the parliament, but generally they're not um, binding in any true sense. Um, however, this Monday um, we had a petition with 12,000 names on it uh, asking the Justice Minister, Rob Nicholson, not to extradite Mark Emery to the United States and that he should serve his time in Canada. And it was a really uh, good day for, for Mark and, and for, for many reasons, because not only was Libby Davies speaking on behalf of the NDP and forget all of the positions that she's held within the NDP, but I think she's gone from health critic to being you know, yeah, deputy chair or something. She's mm -hmm. she's. You know, very influential within the NDP. Moreover, from the Liberal Party, who's all Dussange, uh, former Premier of British Columbia, former Attorney General of British Columbia, um, you know, stood up and, and you know spoke in favor of Mark Emery in the House of Commons and, and to the media thereafter. Um, but even more shocking was Scott Reid, a Conservative member of Parliament from Ontario, who, in some sense, apparently broke even a few rules of parliament to stand up and, and, and put this, uh, put his name behind this ballot and uh, to have him uh, come forward I think is a sign that there may be some dissent even within the conservative party about what should be done here. Now, um, and that's not just with Mark Emery, but uh, he could have been extradited a long time ago and he hasn't been because Rob Nicholson has just withheld his signature and. We're not quite sure why he's done that, given all the constant rhetoric about coming down on on criminals and stuff. Um, now, on the other hand, um, there may be people within the Conservative Party working for us in some sense, or with us, I should say. Not for um, me. Not for us. Right? Sorry. Not. But they're working for the government and the people. Um, anyway, in the last week or so, Stephen Harper was 
uh, talked into going online and opening up uh, and the biggest question uh, is about the, marijuana. The questions. Well, the top eight four. Eight yeah. the top ten. I, I, yeah. I, I get played on the Tories there a bit because like when well, my son was in the Bahamas jail, right? I called everyone from here in Ottawa mm -hmm. trying to help out, and it was Gary Lung that actually got the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I've hung out with Bruce Torrey, who used to be a, a very influential behind-the-scenes member of the the party. And uh, yeah, no, there's, there's the there's last one I called. There, there, there are the others. The, he would have been yeah. the first. In fact, Scott Reed hooked up with Mark Emery and Jody at a libertarian uh, convention because you know people that believe in free economy and freedom of you know rights and stuff are often brought into the conservative realm, and that's very much this. You know, free-thinking kind of uh, person that Scott Reed seems to be. So yeah, no, we've we've uh, done very well, and he's actually basically given up on his political career with the Conservatives just to make a stand here. But I think I've also read that his wife uh, um, has used cannabis uh, to help with her cancer, and otherwise, you know, he's both free-thinking enough and has seen that it's not this evil drug. On the other hand, as I sort of said, Stephen Harper was was convinced by someone in the party that you know if you went online and told everybody like you know ask me some questions and, and I'll answer them. Give you honest answers. Yeah, that was the hand out there. It uh, um, completely backfired, and for one reason or or another. Um, the top four questions on this ended up being about uh, mandatory minimums or legalizing cannabis or something. Top eight um, out of ten. Top eight out of ten, yeah. even. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, when he posted his YouTube video, I think just yesterday in response An to hour this, and a half late. Um, it was something that uh, um, he held uh, any questions about these issues right to the very end. You have to watch almost the whole 40 minute uh, presentation where he answers all the other questions but this one. and then. Comes out with this, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, awkward even in response at times. He, he does say that there's much more serious crimes than smoking a joint, but goes so far as to say that when you buy cannabis, you're not buying it off your neighbors, you're buying it off these international drug cartels yeah, and causing <laughs> catastrophes <laughs> around the world. And, um, and then says that, uh, um, you know, uh, my children, uh, uh, drugs are illegal Forget because the they're children. bad. What about and children? moreover, yeah, he's all worried yeah. about his, his children and, and goes so far as to say that even if it were uh, legalized and licensed, that because it's bad, only bad people involve themselves with it and that there's no way anyone but bad people would have something to do with this. Yeah, so it's all bad and don't be bad, be bad and my kids are bad, are bad and just... That was ridiculous. Yeah, it was certainly something that uh, um, you, you have to see for yourself. I get the sense when you have, but uh, um, it, it, again, you know, you're right at the very end of the clip. It's not worth watching the rest of it, really. But you had another point, I, I'm assuming? Or? Oh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the new push for the not for me ads. Oh. Yeah. Oh um, What's up with that? It's very political. Well, uh, the conservative government is putting a lot of effort into being perceived as tough on crime. I think they'd really want to be. They just aren't sure, uh, in Where some sense, you know, how how to do that. Um, but uh, it's something that has been very much a part of their uh, agenda uh, and. For some reason, Stephen Harper's personal agenda at times, um, and uh, it's it's hard to say why they have that. But not only have they put a lot of money into recent drug campaigns, and um, it's it's actually quite easy if you see those little "Not for Me" ads on buses and stuff. It's really easy to take a little piece of tape and make it pot for me. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen, for that. Um, anyway, um, the other monies that have been spent on the, by the Conservatives on this issue have been to fund studies essentially trying to prove cannabis causes schizophrenia amongst young people. And so uh, it's some, they've also cut all funding for medical marijuana research. Again, I'll get into the MMAR next week. Um, the real more important issue that I, I am glad to have some minutes to spend 
upon is the mandatory minimums for people growing cannabis that um, almost came into law uh, since the last lecture here. And while I'm thanking Kristen, uh, I, I should mention that uh, 